There are hundreds of species of crabs worldwide ranging from the common crab to the ghost crab to the coconut crab to Mr. Krabs to the infamous Crobster. But none of these compare to the magnificent Japanese spider crab. The creature that had once existed in great numbers before World War II, the Japanese spider crab lives deep within the trenches east of Japan. After the nuclear attacks on Japan by the US, organisms living in and around the coast developed strange mutations. A handful of spider crabs developed the ability and obsession to dab. Plenty of animals have dabbed in the past, but none have ever developed a full-on obsession with the craft. Unfortunately, these glorious beasts only existed for a brief period of time after World War II because of their diets, consisting consisted of strictly whole Subway sandwiches, which evidently had not existed in the 40s. Alas, the dab crabs, as some may call them, died out, or did they? Meet Tikikiwi Kokozuku, a young male dab crab who currently lives at the Warsaw Aquarium with his handlers. Our interviewer met with his favorite handler, Bobek Noviki, to discuss Tikikiwi's odd tendencies. The staff at the Warsaw Aquarium quickly turned to the world-renowned crustacean expert Charles Charlie McCharleberg from Scotland to evaluate Tiki Kiwi's condition. Tell us about Tiki Kiwi's condition. Well, after visiting with him, I realized that he was homesick and he wanted to go back to his natural Japanese habitat. He obviously suffers from a long list of mental and physical illnesses such as ADHD, hemorrhoids, jaundice, Ebola, liver failure, PTSD, albinism, testicular cancer, childhood obesity, and liking the show Inside Amy Schumer. Hello. Yes, that was me. Well, just buy a new stop sign. Thank you, Doctor. Not far from Dr. McCharleberg is where the Edinburgh Marine Research Facility is located. We went there to visit with a dolphin named Caitlin Jenner Bin Laden, who seems to suffer from a similar disability to Tiki Kiwis. Well, based on both Caitlin and Tiki Kiwis' behavior, I feel like I have the right to both invent and diagnose the pair with dobbing and crabbing disorder or DCD. I hope Ellen brings me on her show for me discovery, laddie. Oh, oh wait, do you? I would like to tell you an old wise tale that I've heard as a little lad. On your expedition, always listen to your sandwich. That leaves the wife, laddie. DCD is a mental disorder caused by a virus that makes its host vulnerable to the temptation of dabbing. So far as we know, only two document cases of DCD have been discovered. DCD can also be compared to whatever the hell Gary Busey has because both conditions are under the host so goddamn annoying that no one can stand it. We went to go visit with his handler Ice-T to discuss his means of calming Gary's nerves. Me and my boy Gary, we've been through thick and thin together yo, and I ain't gonna leave him just like that. I see him as sort of a this so none, which is a nephew and a son. Yes, I did apply for a patent on the word none. I have devised a 12 step method to rehabilitate my brother. Step one was moving back to the place he felt most at home, and for whatever reason, that place just happened to be Sub-Saharan Africa. I take him to the zoo, and he likes to pet the elephants. Yes, we do cuddle. I'm a man, and I can admit to that. The best part about taking care of Gary is that his mouth is always open, so I just spoon feed him. Someone get that poor Shemel some serious help. Well, regardless of their strange relationship, we can still deduce that the cause for Tiki Kiwi's unhappiness is his location in a barren wasteland frequented by blizzards. We contacted a team of researchers at Marlboro to confirm that Tiki Kiwi is in fact homesick. Smoke. Well, it looks pretty conclusive. Bobek and the other handlers at the Warsaw Aquarium are currently transporting Tiki Kiwi 
to his rightful home off the coast of Japan. Whatever. Wanna go get some Quiznos? You know it, boy. I can't admit that. <laughs> Damn, I'm sorry. <laughs> 